All right, today should be quite spicy. Let's do this. On a completely separate note, it gets up. Hi, everybody! Yeah, we're good to go here. This should be a pretty good one. This one will be a long one, but it'll be good. I'll have to be consistently checking in with the uh, recipe I'm following because I'm following a recipe today because I've never made this before. This version of it, I've made my own at work before, but it's done completely differently. So we'll just wait for. Uh, when people roll in. Shit around. It's fine. Is fine. Yeah, wait a couple more minutes and like roll people to roll in here. It is kind of an inconvenient timing on my end because like 1800 on like a Tuesday. It's like when everyone eats. But uh, it's fine. I haven't eaten since like four. <laughs> I've I had a I. I haven't eaten like a meal meal since like 11.30 though, so, you know, it all, it all adds up. So I'm developing a few one cube. It's, uh, pork, uh, bouillon cubes for stock because we need a pork stock to make this one gravy. I could use the fat from the pork, but uh, that's like a little risque, and I I would I, would, I like playing it safe with the blue and keep it to fall back. Also, I can make it a little sooner and have it sit and just enjoy the flavors. So you know, it's kind of a a bit of a mixed bag on my regard. Right. Well, guess we may as well get started here. So today we are making. I'll turn the music down a bit. There we go. Uh, really long. Yeah, uh, we're making Bavarian pork roast. Uh, recipe was sent in by Josh, who frequents the chat. Um, so I figured I'd make it because I've never made it before, at least the Bavarian version of it. So this should be quite fun. So the first thing we need to do is actually prepare our pork, which. Um, what do you call it? I have here a fuck ton of pork. There is, uh, how much is there here? Uh, 1.2 kilos almost. So, should be, should be good. It's a lot of meat. Yeah, so that should be dinner for several days for just myself. But of course, if you have a hungry family or are a person who eats a lot of meat, then I guess this is not a lot of food. But for me, it's quite a bit. So this should last me uh, a few days, probably three or four days, going to be honest here. So take the pork out of the container and we can throw the container out and not break everything in my kitchen in the meantime. Uh, I don't get to use, sadly, I don't get to use any of my really fun kitchen stuff. So that kind of sucks. But, uh, you know. It is what it is. Mm. 
Yeah. So we got our pork here. Uh, probably cut. I've already need to cut the fat off. No, we don't want to cut the skin off. Well, I was thinking of cutting off the uh, excess two or three pieces on the edge here that are kind of hanging over. So we'll probably just do that really quick. Yeah, just get rid of that. And then we just need to, if I'm not mistaken, we just need to cross cut the pork. Wash the meat and pat tray, peel and prepare garlic, wash the soup vegetables, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just start cross cutting the, uh, if my pork actually wants to cut here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it was a little too thick on that one. That's fine. There. There. Boom. So next we can uh, take said pork and just put it aside. Yeah, I don't have, I should have put it in a plate. The bowl will work fine for what I needed to do. Then we just clean the cutting board really quickly under some water. Uh, let me move all my wiring so it doesn't get stuck in the sink. Because that seems dangerous for, you know, electrical reasons. But yeah, there we go. Good on that regard. Uh, what else do I need to do? Yeah, vegetables, get those out. Oh, I should have gone over the ingredients. Uh, today's ingredients are actually pretty straightforward. I have a mix of root vegetables here. The recipe called for celery. I don't eat a lot of celery, so I avoid, I, I decided not to include it. I just realized I forgot gloves. I was gonna buy gloves with beets, so that's gonna be interesting. Uh, but it's parsnips, beets, and carrots, just a classic, like, three uh, root vegetable combination. Got some, so those are gonna be served with it, with a gravy, and they're gonna be served in a little bit of like a soupy kind of broth thing, so it should be really good. Um, for the uh, actual pork, we have some garlic, uh, we have some fennel seeds, or fennel seeds, sorry. Uh, we have some beer, uh, this is just like a regular pilsner, although you can use a dark ale if you prefer as well, but I wanted to go something a bit more Northern European um, then you have uh, some pork bouillon cube, that's for the pork gravy, but then you also just have pepper, salt, and then this also gets served alongside some potatoes, which I have over on the, uh, over, over here. Um, yeah, that's kind of everything, it's pretty straightforward. So I guess the uh, next thing we shall do uh, and keep in mind this recipe takes between one and a half and two hours to complete. So you are going to need to put some time aside to make this recipe. Um, luckily, I have the whole night because uh, I, uh, I have tomorrow off. Well, I don't have tomorrow off of school. Tomorrow's like a midterm, but it's self-run because it's COVID. So we stay at home. Um, so I, I really just have to like set aside my own time and kind of work on my own clock. Uh, which is really nice, um, personally. I am not gonna complain about that. Yeah, so. But my day's been pretty good, you know? Just vibing. There we go, so we got our parsnip. For some reason it's a little sticky, I don't know why. No, parsnips normally aren't that sticky. You can keep these if you want and make like pars pars parsnip chips, but uh, I'm not going to because it doesn't seem like it's necessary for this recipe. Oh, you'll also need some like uh, El Generico sunflower oil and some uh, paprika for the pork. Um, yeah, so you're really relying on the fennel, the uh, garlic, and the paprika for your spices on the pork. Yeah. 
All right, just double check this thing. Boom. So yeah, we just need to start peeling these goddamn vegetables. We'll see what goes. So my experience is horrible. Ah! And then we need to peel the other one. So I want to get like several days worth of food out of this. There's like a lot of cooking and you know, having leftovers is always very pogorino. So yeah. bloody I don't want to get hands that look like I murdered somebody so uh, you know I'm gonna gonna just like I don't know I need I need gloves man fine I'll just accept the bloody hand uh, here we go. come on or I can just waste some of it ah. here we go go wash my hands immediately now uh, well I shouldn't do that until I've chopped the vegetables up because uh, otherwise I'm just gonna get them looking like I've yeah you know just <laughs> it looks even worse than the camera because like my skin is really red just because the lighting is so shit but now it really does look like I've murdered somebody and I don't know how to feel about that It's fine, you know. Okay. So, we'll cut up the beef first. We'll just get it over with. The top off, cut the bottom off. Cut it in half. There we go. And then we'll just get like big chunks, like kind of like that, I think is the pitch here. Not the fanciest looking thing in the world, but it'll taste good. And that's what's much more important. Then just put these in a uh, these in a bowl. So we can prepare them for the future. Cut these off, don't need them. But uh, do that whole circular technique. These carrot pieces are gonna end up being a lot smaller than the beets is gonna be a problem for cooking consistency, but uh, I'm sure I'll survive. Boom. Bam. Cool. <laughs> uh, I mean, the vegetable was already dead, so you know, it's fine. Also, hi. 
So, there we go. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, just the, the aftermath of Beats without gloves. <laughs> so, it's fine. But it's fine, hands are clean of the sin now, so, you know. And then we'll just put a little bit of sunflower oil, if I can get it to open. Uh, get a little bit of the sunflower oil. Come on, there we go. And then a little bit of our spoon to mix that rosin oil gets on everything. And then, yeah, of course, everything's gonna fall out because I am not planning this well enough. It's fine, it's chaos. Every Milsim Chef cooking stream has to have a little bit of chaos, you know? Um, then we'll grab a little bit of salt. So we'll pinch some salt into that. And then get some pepper mixed in. And boom, easy enough. Put that on the side and we can preheat our oven to, if I remember correctly, 220. So we're all ish. Bam. So we'll let the oven preheat now. Um, and at this point it is time to prepare the pork. So I'm gonna grab an, uh, I don't really need the cutting board for anything else. So yeah, sure. We'll take our pork back on the cutting board. And yeah, we've already cut up the bit so it gets like a nice crispy kind of cons crispy consistency on the top. Now we just need to put all of our spices on it. So we'll grab our paprika, uh, which I actually haven't opened yet. I just bought the paprika today. So we'll, uh, we'll roll with it and see how that goes. Oh, come on. It smells really good though. That's, that's much more important, you know? <laughs> and then... There we go. Some on the top, get some on the sides, get some on the bottom, get some on this side, and then just Rub it into the meat. Did I get some on this side? I don't think I got any on this side yet. There we go. So now I got that. Then I uh, probably could have run all of the spices in at the same time, but it's fine. You know, sometimes you really, I need to think before I do more, you know, like life lesson from today's stream, but it's fine. fennel into the meat itself. Yeah. And then, yeah, that should be fine. I'm not a huge fennel guy, so we'll just put a little bit of it. And then salt. I actually think I wanna put a little bit of flake salt if I still have some. But I'll hold that for the side for now because we'll just put that on the top before we put it into the oven because right now we just need the regular salt. We want quite a bit of it. Flip over the meat and then 
more salt. Oh boy. Ah. More salt. More salt. And then the last of the salt there. And then just again, rub that in. Boom. And then pepper. It smells really good, actually. I'm kind of surprised at how good it smells, considering how you know soon into the soon into the process we are, because we haven't even put it in the oven yet. But yeah. Bam. Cool. And then again, just more more evidence that I'm a murderer. So you know, that's just that's just perfect. And then put the, uh, it's not going to sit, which is problematic. I think I need to, this like stylistic trying to make it look nice, I don't think is going to work as well as I hoped it did, but it's fine. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, the kitchen is already pretty messy now, but that's fine. Uh, place the meat in a good way with a vegetable. <laughs> place the meat on it, yeah. Nice, yeah, so we're actually, we're actually right on process. We just need to let the oven heat up a little bit. It uh, still has its red light on, so, you know. There you go. Yeah, that's smart. That's actually probably really smart. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. Making me a better chef. That's always important. Uh, where is the salt? I need it. It's this salt, right? Yeah. It's a little too, this first cut was a little too, too much, but it ends up working out here, uh, which is good. You know, it all, it all lines up. Put some of the fennel in there too. That should help. And there we go. Happy with that. That actually looks, smells really good. Probably because of the fennel because um, fennel smells really good. I just find it can be very overwhelming, so I'm a little worried about using too much of it. Uh, from my own personal experience, that's kind of where I sit on that. Um, but yes. Still warming up. Yeah. It's starting to get hot though. That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah. So we're just gonna, we're gonna vibe. Oh no, shit, I forgot the garlic. But the garlic goes in with the vegetables on the bottom, so it just needs to be, um, oh, what's the term? Um, broken and peeled. That's the term I'm looking for here. Oh. Nicotario Cipato? I don't know how to say that. This is getting embarrassing. Uh, Nicotaro. There we go. We'll just go with that. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the street. Hope you, uh, hope you enjoy. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. There we are. 
Bam. I'm gonna have to vacuum my floor after this. I've got like uh, salt all over the place. Ah, it's fine. <laughs> so what c cooking is for making a disaster. That's like half the fun, right? Like, at least in my logic. Yeah. I don't know. My day was uh, pretty good. Hope everyone else is having a, a pretty good day. Or at least, you know, surviving in COVID because COVID is COVID. But uh, if you are having a shit day, I hope I can make it somewhat more entertaining. Exactly sure who you're talking to, uh, Nick. <laughs> also, I'm not Tiger, I'm Teslin, but you know, it's fine. Milsim Chef Teslin, I get it, you know. <laughs> Confusing names. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, there's uh, Tiger, that's Tiger. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. Making German food today, I hope you're proud of me. Um, yeah, <laughs> welcome everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hope everyone's having a good day. Hope everyone having, hope everybody is having fun, or at least is becoming more entertained by my chaos. I'm very confused right now, so it's fine. Uh, yeah, so we can put some stuff away. Uh, we've already, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, you're one of Astra's friends. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, probably a few too many, but it's fine. Uh, I'll survive. <laughs> um, it should be fine. I like the smaller, I don't know. It's whatever. It's fine. I've never made pork roast before at home. I've done it at work and he wanted, or my boss always wanted it cut really thin. But that was because of how we served it. Oh yeah, that's fair. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a chef decision, you know, like each chef to each, like each chef has kind of their own method with it. Um, I guess I could, no, I don't need to fill this with water because I need to make the potatoes in like the last half hour of the stream. Uh, I could make the gravy now if I wanted to, but I don't think that, I still don't think that's smart. I think we just need to wait for everything to warm up. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we got some, you know, roast pork here. It's a, uh, over a kilo, so, you know, too much food for one individual. But uh, it's fine, I can, I can eat it in multiple days. Uh, oh, that's a good question, Tiger. Uh, when crushing garlic, do you slice it after two? Um, normally, if I'm, okay, so I, um, right, crushing garlic, you mean in a garlic press like this, right? Because I, I have a garlic press. Uh, if you mean crushing it, I normally just put it in like this afterwards. I'll put it right in. But if, or do you mean like, oh, you mean like doing, like putting the garlic and then like bashing it with your thumb or with the uh, blunt end of the knife, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, yes, I do cut it in that context. But I normally don't do that because I have a... I normally have a press, or I want to use just diced garlic. That's usually the two in-betweens. But yeah, if you're going to do it that way, I, I normally cut it after I uh, press it down, just so you can get it even thinner. And you can actually sometimes get it into like a really nice garlic paste if you cut it really finely and then just press it and you keep pressing it down like a butter. Um, you can usually actually get like yeah, a really nice garlic kind of paste going that works out really well. Um, I guess we could make the stock for the pork. Uh, let me double check what the, uh, how much it wants for each cube. Um, half a liter, cool. So, okay. Half a liter of agua. Spill uh, automatically because it's me, we need to spill a little bit. 
<laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna be using the beer for the cooking. Uh, I have uh, I have something else to drink for later. The the beer is for the cooking. Yeah, I if I had more tubo classic, I would drink more tubo classic. But uh, it's the last one I have, so I have to keep it for the food. Um, yeah, we'll uh, heat up the water here. And then once it gets hot, we'll just throw that in. I need to grab a uh, piece of paper towel and dry behind the uh, table here. But yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm not drinking the beer today, sadly. Uh, I have, I don't know what I'm gonna have to drink. I could have a gin and tonic. I could just have whiskey on the rocks. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of debating. It's what I wanna drink for tonight. <laughs> the beer does look very bummer. It's a little bit of... <laughs> You're correct, Tiger. They were sold out. There's a there is a Bavarian beer I can get at my local grocery store, but they were sold out. So uh, I had to settle with what I had in the house, and uh, that's Northern Danish Pilsner. So very Northern European, not not Central, but uh, it's fine. It's an artistic license, right? <laughs> uh, all right. So the oven's heated up. Uh, so we can. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, we can put the... Uh... All right, so we can put our pork in now, actually. So we're gonna take our pork. Uh, both, uh, Tiger. I'm gonna clean it after I make the stock. So, we have just put our pork into the oven. And I need a glove thing to grab the thing so I can put the vegetables on the bottom part of it. And so basically the idea with this, let me get a camera out here. Uh, let, me get the, let me move the camera so I can kind of get like a, uh, let's see. There we go. So like, right, the idea here, you all can see it, is that the pork and all of the fat is gonna drip onto the vegetables, which is just gonna make the vegetables taste even better. And that's kind of the pitch here. Boom. Uh, Tiger, because that's not what the recipe I'm following told me to do. I could do that, but uh, I'm going to stick to my principles and stick to my guts and roast the vegetables in there. So I need, oh no, Tiger, it's, uh, yeah, it is, it's, uh, it is, it's, uh, I don't know, like, it's kind of a bit more towards, um, I don't know what it's called. It's Fleskestai in Danish, which is just like. Uh, I can't. I can't remember what it is in, in English, but it's like fleskestai, which sounds really dumb. It, when, oh, I forgot to add the garlic. The garlic needs to go into here as well for aroma. Shit. There we go. Cool. Boom, and we need to set a timer for uh, thirty minutes. <laughs> so let me just do that here. There we go. Cool. Yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just roast, roast uh, pork belly, but I can't remember exactly what it is. Ah, it's fine. Whatever. It's it, it's it is a bit different on that regard. You're not cooking it in the water. Uh, you're cooking it kind of inside of the oven for like almost two hours here. We'll uh, so this is this is gonna be a decently long stream, but uh. So I'm kind of compartmentalizing each of the things that we're making so that it's uh you know kind of uh not vi not vibe with it but uh yeah so we're gonna let it sit in the oven for half an hour here after half an hour we're uh the next step is to uh 
We're supposed to make the gravy next. So actually, we're gonna do that now. Uh, that's why we're making the broth. Um, yes, it's gonna sit for about half an hour. Um, and then after that, we're gonna pour the gravy on top of the, uh, wait, pour the gravy into the baking tray with the vegetables. Reduce the oven temperature to 170. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, pour the beer over the roast pork after another, yeah. And then we're just gonna be pouring the beer over top of the roast pork. And then it's gonna cook for another approximately hour, hour and a half. Um, and then after that, we should be done. So we can add our bouillon cube to that and we can start making our broth here. At the same time, I just realized I forgot my butter. So I'm gonna go grab that. Uh, yeah. All right, we got our butter. Um, Skip this song. <laughs> All right, here we go. And then we can turn this pan up a little bit. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, and turn the pan on. Yeah, that's exactly it, Tiger. It's pouring every 15 to 20 minutes. You just like have a cup of the broth on the bottom and then you just pour it back on top. It's ex you're exactly correct there. Anyways, we have our pork broth here. So, we probably won't need all of that, but I'll keep it and I can make gravy in the future with it because I can just warm it up from room temperature because it's just a stock, right? So, yeah. We can put our fennical, our fennical. <laughs> I just so danified that, god damn it. Uh, <laughs> fennel. It's a fennikil in Dansk, but uh, it's fennel. <laughs> I, I bastardized the two of them. God fucking damn it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Situation normal. <laughs> uh, it's alright. I, I, I haven't even had anything to drink yet, and I'm already blabbering over my words. I guess I should add more alcohol, because that'll just make it even more interesting. Uh, <laughs> perhaps. But yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, yeah, so we're gonna let this heat up, then we'll add the butter, then the flour, and then we'll add the stock in, and then just let it mix together. Um, yeah, should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, for the potatoes, it's gonna be inside of that after we make the gravy, obviously. Uh, I'm gonna grab one of my storage containers here just so the, for the rest of the stock after I'm done with it today. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get a drink. <laughs> I think I need one. Uh, where the hell are all my glasses? There we go. Should be right back. some ice cubes and let's just grab some whiskey fuck it I'll make this incredibly interesting it's quite a bit of whiskey but it's fine <laughs> Let this warm up. Just gotta wait another couple minutes and we should be good. <laughs> I haven't had anything to eat in like three or four hours. So the alcohol is gonna go straight to the system, meaning this is gonna get increasingly more enjoyable and more fucked as we go along, which good thing for you guys will be not so great for me, but it's fine. <laughs> it's the worst that can happen. See where this warms up. I guess the trick is to just put a little bit of it on it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's getting to a decent warmth. Not like... Not like crazy warm. Yeah, exactly. More chaos. More anarchy. <laughs> no, exactly. It's fine, Tiger. Like, you're allowed to drink on stream. You're just not allowed to get, like, ridiculously drunk. And also, to me, I'm pretty well composed, I like to think. I think I know the Twitch TOS pretty well. But getting banned would not be very pog, yeah. That's, this is very true. A little more butter. I mean, it's a gravy, you can always just, you know, your butter to, butter to flour ratio just determines how much, uh, how much you're gonna make and then how thick you want it. So, you know, it's fun, it works out. BS yeah, should be should be pretty good. Let's go. All right, and let's get some flour here. And then a whisk, which is somewhere. Ah, whisk is over here. And then just slowly pour this in and mix it together. And you're gonna get a really, really light sauce here. Um, so if you're Danish, this is when you would add your coloring. I'm gonna keep it because I actually like the really light sauce to go with the pork. But I know Danes, like if the sauce isn't brown, they don't they don't consume it. That's basically like the, a Danish like implicit rule I've found. Um, <laughs> so they use like like there's a thing in da in Danish which is in Denmark, which is literally just like food coloring, but for gravy. Like it's not for anything else. It's very 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 specific. I don't know why. But uh, it's like, it's a very Danish thing and it's just something that I've always noticed in like Danish kitchens that they add to the sauce to give it a darker color. And I'm like, okay. I have nothing against it. It's just, <laughs> okay, maybe, okay, uh, yeah. Of course it's not for everyone, but like generally speaking, Danes will have their sauce like that. I actually think I need more liquid. It's true for a lot of people, to be fair. A lot of older people. Make it taste. Let's see what it tastes. It probably won't need salt, but it might need more of some other spices. Mmm. Tastes really good though. Uh, let's see, what could I add to it? I actually don't even need anything really. A little bit more of the sauce, because it's gonna reduce anyways. But then yeah, we'll let it reduce. Put the rest of this, uh... Oh, my workplace used to do it all the time when we would have, uh, what was it? Steak flesk with basilio salt, which is, um, for non-Danes, uh, steak flesk with basilio salt is just like, kind of really thick pieces. It's the same part of the, it's the same part of the pig that I'm cooking tonight, but it's in smaller slices. And then you serve that with uh, a parsley sauce, um, which is really good. Um, but if you have like, yeah, roast pork or anything really with Danes, it like um, frigadella, which is like basically Danish meatballs, is the best way to describe them. Um, 
they also will add the uh, the brown food coloring to their dishes here. So that's that's like at least what I can remark from my own personal experience of Denmark. Are you not are you not a fan of that dish? Good to know. It's okay. It's a little simple, but I you don't like it. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll just let this reduce and get a little thicker because it's uh, it's a little on the thin side. But uh, that's fine. Maybe it can be corrected like that. That's a good thing. Take a look at the pork here. Starting to cook. So that's always good. But yeah. I don't know. Danish food in general, I find, is a little bit... It can be a little bit simple. Because like most of the dishes are just, here is a meat... Here are some potatoes, and here is some gravy, and then maybe there's some like cabbage with it. Uh, I have no problem with it. It tastes good, but it is very. As someone who likes to cook a lot of Mexican, uh, like Mexican is probably my go-to for cooking. I really like making Mexican food, um, or Indian food, or like, you know, ethnic foods. It can be a little. It can be a little bit like. Um, it can be a little bit of a, uh, a strong contrast between uh, the two. Uh, the differences in cultures, <laughs> but, you know. Danes are uh, my grandpa. You know, he's he's Danish, so uh, you know the, he's he's a very meat and potatoes guy. He won't eat sushi uh, because, as he puts it, I like my fish cooked. Um, his words, not mine. I love sushi. Um. Mm. But, uh, you know, it's each their own. I'm not going to judge someone based off of their food preferences. I'm not like, uh, I don't know. I'll eat basically anything. Uh, but, I mean, other people can choose what they want to eat. I don't particularly care. I basically, yeah, but yeah, I basically eat anything. So, <laughs> my, my rule of thumb is always if I'm not paying for it, I'll, I'll probably like it. <laughs> Food-wise. Um... Free food is always good. It doesn't matter if it actually is tasty. It's free. Um, okay, that's like okay, not anything, but like the out of things that people would consider food, uh, the only things I really don't like are eggplants. Okay, yeah, eggplants, uh, zucchini. I'm not a huge fan of, and olives. Olives are the only thing I actively despise and hate with a passion. Every single olive that ever I, I ever see can burn in hell. I hate olives. It's completely irrational, but I hate them. Like, there's no rationale. Oh, there's, there's some rationale. I just, I never liked them. And then I just grew to just despise them with a passion. How long have we been on that timer? 15 minutes, cool. But yeah, there we go. We can lower the temperature on this too because it's kind of gotten to a consistency I like for gravy. Um, I like my gravy a little on the thinner side. I know there's some people that like it really damn thick. It's not me. I mean, I don't like it soupy thin, 
but you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, trying to think of what I need to do next. I probably could stick the thermometer into the pork. I might do that at the half hour mark. That way I don't have to rely on exactly just the timer. No, when it's done, I can use the thermometer. So I'll probably use that to check temps. But uh, that's that's for later. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll fill this with water and some salt for the potatoes. But... And there we go. So we'll get that, get some salt in there. And then I actually do need a cutting board, but even though my other one is dirty and covered in pork, I have like the cutest cutting board ever. Uh, let me just get the plastic labels off of them because I just bought these like yesterday. Uh, I didn't buy them yesterday, but two days ago? Yeah, so they got like the cutest little cutting board ever. It's like the size of like my forearm. But yeah, so I have this for uh, for when I when the other one's dirty and I don't have to do dishes all the time now. So, you know, that's a win. Boom, 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 and then we'll probably just have to cut the uh, black parts off of the uh, off of this. It's fine. You're fine. You're not. You need to be cut. There we go. Cool. Boom. Turn that down to like a one. We just need to keep it warm. We don't need an actual temp on it now. There we go. Got our got our potatoes cut. Not that that was particularly difficult. And now I just gotta wait. You know, it's the uh, the endless waiting game of cooking. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I need a subject matter to talk about. I need anything. Someone give me something. Yeah. All right, let's try to figure out something. It's bad I've almost drank in this entire thing of whiskey. This is gonna get really grim really quickly. I'm very concerned. Probably could clean up my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, potatoes are one of those things that uh, they get really boring really quickly. It's like, I eat, um... Oh, that's something I make. I make a lot of Italian food as well. So I actually have like a good balance where it's like, I'll have like pasta a couple days in a row. And then like other days I'll have, uh, I'll have potatoes. And it's kind of like my mix is on starch. So I kind of rotate between the two. And then I rotate between making different kinds of potatoes. So I'll make like, I'll make like French fries or I'll make like uh, mashed potatoes or I'll make, um, I'll make just like regular potatoes. Potatoes are one of those things that, yeah, it can be, uh, it can be a little bit like uh, boring because it can get very repetitive because there's only so much you can do with the starch. But that's why, that's why I like making pasta a lot more Italian. Like I, I like, yeah. If I had to say that the number three foods I cook the most are like North American, so that's like uh, burgers, uh, steak, like uh, very traditional North American foods. I make that quite a bit because it's easy. Um, I make a lot of uh, Italian and then I make a lot of Mexican or Latin American food. Um, 
Those are probably like the top three. And I really and I would say my favorite to cook is Latin American because it's really flavorful and it's really colorful, which is really it's, it's really nice to it's really nice to mess around with on the plate. If that makes sense, like you can do a lot of different things with a with a plate of uh, Mexican food because there's so many different colors and so many different elements. I guess in that regard, in a in a more like intellectual cooking sense. Well, that's unfortunate. I make um, I actually make quite a bit of rice as well. Like I make curry probably like once a week. Uh, which kind of curry? Uh, I know all the Brits in, in the chat are gonna get really annoyed because I'm gonna say like, I don't know that much about curry because I'm not British or Indian, but I make a lot of butter chicken um, because chicken is really easy to make with curry. Um, I've made it before on the stream, but I'm gonna revisit curry in the future because I wanna make a, there was a lamb curry recipe I saw the other day that was really good. I just need to afford lamb <laughs> and then I can probably make it. Because it sounded really good. Um, and yeah. And then I make a little bit of wok as well. Because um, wok is really good. So yeah, I can always I can always enjoy like a nice uh, a nice wok uh, like teriyaki chicken. Or walk for dinner you know like very very tasty I don't have the right pan so I kind of just half half do actual walk but uh, that's beside the point uh, when if I got an actual like walk uh, pan I would do it a lot more because that would be so much fun I made it on stream before as well but I might need to revisit it because I need to do it with shrimp uh, I also have like a ton of risotto in my cupboard here, like risotto rice. So I need to make risotto more as well. Because risotto is also really good. Um, and it's obviously rice based. It's just, you know. Or sorry, risotto uh, is, you know, I gotta, sound, I gotta sound somewhat fancy and actually not North American. Uh, <laughs> It does sound fancier in a, you know, every, you know the, the saying, like, everything sounds fancier in a British accent, like risotto, risotto. Just one of the, one of the classic examples, I guess. Maybe that's just my North American upbringing, though, with the whole British accent that, you know, everyone with an accent is, like, fancy or, like, unique or whatever, right? So, it could just be my filthy North American upbringing. <laughs> But who knows? Maybe it's just... Oh god, I can already feel myself getting a little bit tipsy. I actually think I need to add a little bit more broth to this. I'm gonna grab it before it's so warm. Yeah, it is so warm. Cool. Cool, cool. Uh, it's getting a little bit gummy. Uh, as I like to put it, so I'm gonna add a little bit more, uh, yeah, there we go. Bam. Well, what is your favorite uh, dish to eat then? I guess I can ask you that question. Uh -huh. There we go. Let's give it another taste. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm very confused by the recipe. The instructions are uh, unclear. Okay, can you pick like a top three? Or are you, you, you're really just like all food? I think you're supposed to take the vegetables out after, but I can't, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. We'll figure this out as we go, that's fine. After this, I have to kill like an hour, wait an hour and a half, waiting for the, uh, waiting for the pork. I can go play some games. I can work. I don't know. <laughs> go play some quick serve delicious. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, that might actually be the play here. Nah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, if I had to pick like a favorite dish. Uh, yeah, I mean, for breakfast, it's really easy because I love French toast so much that I would stand by French toast as my favorite breakfast food. Um, I could be really basic and say I like pizza, but I mean, who doesn't like pizza? So um, I think there has to be something, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, there's so many different foods I like. I mean, fish tacos is easily up there for me. If I had to pick like one of them is like fish tacos. Um, it would depend because my old workplaces, there was always stuff I ordered that I really liked. Um, and we had carnitas at my, I think they were called, no, chicorones is what they're called, uh, which is very similar to fresque, fresque style. Yeah, All right. yeah, fresque style. Um, in Danish. Also, that is time to add the gravy to the bottom of the bottom of everything. Perfect. Lower the temp to 175 in the oven, and we add the gravy to the bottom of the pan or bottom of the uh, bottom of the tray here. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. And then we're gonna get our thermometer, which is right here. Uh, and then put it into the pork. So we can make sure we can get an accurate temperature of what we're looking for here. Um, and now we need to give it 15 more minutes. Bam. Cool. Uh, now I gotta kill an hour and a half. I don't know what I need to do for an hour and a half. Fuck. 
do some cleaning. I can clean my dishes. But uh, that's not exactly uh, not exactly stream worthy in my opinion. Um, Oh, that's, uh, okay. That's really good to know, though. Uh, just for, uh, for future reference, by the way. That you're picky, so, you know, give me, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, my brother's a really picky eater. Uh, I think that's a picky eater. Um, like, yeah, my, and I have a lot of friends that are extremely picky. It's, like, ridiculous to me. Anyways, we need to get some alcohol ready for this as well. Uh, I'm actually gonna get a uh, my my mug for tea, which is just a Superman coffee mug. Uh, we'll use that to scoop everything up, I think. Pour the alcohol into that so we can pour it over our stuff. But you know, it's like, I'm, I'm, again, I'm one of those people that's like, I'll eat anything. I'm, I'm really not picky when it comes to food. Um, so, yeah. Again, I'll eat anything barring the three things I've listed. But like, other than that, I'm one of those people that's like, don't knock it until you try it, you know? Like, uh, I kind of, I take that philosophy into cooking, into eating, as I do into the rest of my life, it's like, I'm, a lot of things, it's like, you know, you, you deal with new things, and it, it can be very stressful, and it can be, uh, really, oh, no, that's, yeah, that's not great, that takes out a, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different options, there's a lot of stuff that has tomatoes in it, um, I have no allergies. I'm like, I, again, I'm, I'm one lucky bastard when it comes to that. It's like, I am I'm allergic to absolutely nothing. Uh, um, like, I've had like reactions to like changing like, to like certain chemicals, like petroleum products. But that's like, I wouldn't count that because that's pretty normal. Whereas like, it's not like I'm allergic to like eggs or flour or anything like that. Yeah, that's good. My brother was very much not like that. My brother is extremely picky. He is like probably the second pickiest eater I know. Uh, I have a friend who's worse. Um, and it's it's it is basically like he will knock it before he tries it. He, he's like I I know I won't like this. It's like you've never you haven't even tried it or like. He'll have had like, um, oh, what's an example? Um, let me see, let me could give an example for, for my brother. Um, beans, like, uh, like, uh, beans with like butter, right? He, he had them like eight, nine years ago. Didn't like them because he was like, uh, like nine years old. I, I just, I totally just aged my brother, but it's fine. Um, and like he had them like eight or nine years ago. Didn't like them because kids don't like vegetables. And still to this day refuses to eat them because of that incident like nine years ago. I'm like, dude, dude, your palate could have totally changed. That was me with mushrooms. Um, I used to hate, I've, I've told the story on stream before, but I'll say it again. Um, I used to absolutely despise mushrooms, like with a, a burning passion. Hated them. Um, One second. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, he like hated mushrooms, or I really didn't like mushrooms. Sorry. Um, but what I kept doing was um, every year I would try them again. Like I would try them, like oh, I haven't had these, and I haven't had mushrooms in a while. I didn't like them, and I, I, you know, I would just, I would, I would order them with like, I'd like get, get a steak. And the steak would come with mushrooms. And if I didn't eat the mushrooms, it was whatever. But I would be willing to try them. Um, until one day, I did that. And, like, mushrooms just clicked for me. I don't know if it was, like, the chef who cooked them that day. Or if my palate had changed that much. Because palates do change over time. And people like different foods over, like, extended periods of time. Um, 
That's why old people get the like joking reputation of like eating a lot of bland food. Is it has something to do with like I think it has something to do with the palate changing and becoming a bit less like sensitive. Uh, I don't know if that's actually what it is. I think there's probably, there's probably some better science on it, but that's like my own observations. Is like, yeah. Um, so I and then one day mushrooms just clicked for me, and I loved mushrooms, and I still do to this day. It's just like I don't know. It's just one of those things that's like. I grew up with the mentality of like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna keep trying it until I like it or I don't. Brussels sprouts was the same for me for the longest time. I was like every other kid who absolutely hated Brussels sprouts. But um, one day I like, my dad made them in a specific way that we hadn't had before and I loved them and my dad continued to cook them that way. Um, so it's just one of those things that you, sometimes it's like, sometimes you do genuinely don't like it and sometimes you just haven't had it prepared for you in the right way. That's at least my own personal philosophy on food. But I mean, everyone's allowed their own opinions, right? <laughs> And I'm not gonna stop people from not liking something. If people are like, yeah, I don't, I don't like eating uh, I don't know, uh, oranges. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You're missing out because I love oranges, but uh, that's your uh, your prerogative. As long as it's not like you know, like people actively only eat like uh, McDonald's fast food or something. Cause that's not good for you. But. As long as like your diet is relatively healthy and you choose not to eat certain foods, I don't give a, I really don't care. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on the internet who cooks food. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's the best way I can describe it, I guess. What do I know? I'm just some guy who took some culinary school training and uh. Whoa. Was the last of the whiskey. This is uh, getting more interesting. We're getting like a bit like philosophical drunk, which is like the interesting drunk. <laughs> Although I'm not drunk, to be fair. I, if I got drunk off of like a glass of whiskey, I would be screwed, life-wise. Um, especially in Denmark, considering how much people drink over here. Holy cow. It's like, I thought I was like a pretty decent drinker, and then I moved to Denmark. Like, whack. That's all I'll say. No further comment. Did you put the vision away in the meantime? Uh, okay. Um, in Canada, and this is really, I think lightweight and heavyweight is like a societal thing. Um. <laughs> In Denmark, I'm pretty, I'm like a moderate leaning on light in Denmark. In Canada, I'm actually pretty close to a medium to heavy drink, like tolerance person. Um, it really depends. It doesn't help that I haven't eaten really anything of like substance since like noon. So like, it, you know, it goes straight into the bloodstream. But if I've eaten properly, I can actually hold my alcohol pretty well. Um, it is one of those societal things though, because Danes drink a lot more than Canadians. I think even all of Europe drinks more than Canadians, to be fair, uh, because we're very much like the Americans, where it's kind of like a, you only do it on the weekends, and even when you do, it has to be like a long weekend, because you're part, like, people drink a lot less, just in general. Um, so, like, uh, when I'm out with my Danish friends, they make fun of me because I'm a complete lightweight. But then I talk about how much I drink with my Canadian friends, and they, they consider me like ridiculously heavy, a ridiculously heavy drinker, who like really should like is like almost like functioning alcoholic levels in Canada. Like, um, I drink on the weekdays over here. Like, I'll have like a beer for dinner, which is pretty normal in Denmark. But in Canada, it's a huge social taboo. You don't do it. Um, that's kind of the best way I can describe that. So. Yeah. That's kind of like, that's the best way I can describe that stuff. So, you know, 
But now we're just waiting. You know, we got five minutes, and then we need to add the beer to the uh, the beer to the thing. So I'll just keep you know chatting. Hope people are finding this some level of entertaining. It's a longer stream. A lot of the other stuff I cooked is a lot simpler. But this was on sale, and uh, one of the the moderator for my chat. Uh, Josh, I don't know if he's here right now. He said he would join the stream, but I don't think he's here right now, sadly. Um, he uh, suggested the recipe. So, you know, if you click on the, uh, there's a Discord link, like, I think it's, let me see if I can point to it. There's a, the Discord link is like over here. Let me see if I can, eh. Yeah, there we go. Like down there, there's a Discord link. It's also down in the chat. If people want to join it, uh, people can join that Discord. Uh, and the uh, it's basically like a personal discord for the channel and everything so you know uh, there's a few benefits for subscribers stuff like that I'm still trying to get everything worked out on it but there's a stream suggestion thing so if there's any kind of food recipe food thing or anything wacky you want me to try to make on stream just shoot the recipe in that chat and I'll probably try it at some point um, uh, tiger uh, link is in the description it's a permanent it's a permanent discord link uh, so you should just be able to click like the info on my stream channel. Um, you should be able to just click the scroll down into like the about me kind of part of Twitch. Um, I can send you the link if you want, but I think you should it should be pretty easy to find in the in the Discord part of like my bio on Twitch. Um, and yeah, just literally shoot a recipe in there, and at some point I'll probably try to make it when I can get the time. And if it's expensive ingredients, probably the money. But if it's easy, cheap ingredients, I can probably do it the next stream or something like that. Um, if people want me to try to make that. So, you know. I still have somebody who needs to send me a suggestion because I owe him one for something we did. Um, where is the rum? Uh, okay, so I have two different kinds of rum. Uh, one is almost empty and the other isn't. I don't, I haven't been drinking it. I've been having whiskey instead, Creed. Uh, but these are the two rums I have. Uh, this one's like almost empty. It's just like regular Bacardi. And then this is uh, Don Canark, which is like the cheapest rum you can buy in Denmark. Uh, I own a ton of alcohol, uh, so because I like cooking. Uh, and I, actually, I like making drinks, like uh, mixology, stuff like that. So. <laughs> Fried is uh, crying, I'm sure. Um, I, I really only use it to like curse. <laughs> Fine, Freed. I'm sorry, Freed. I, I only have like cheap rum. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so I own uh, Jameson whiskey, Kahlua, vodka, Captain Morgan's white rum. Vermouth, which is only for martinis, and I barely drink those. Uh, limoncello, which is really good. Anbitta. Uh, sick, bro. You might know what Anbitta is, but everyone else won't. It's like an Aarhus thing. So Aarhus city I live in. Uh, it's like a very, it's a, I don't know what it is. It's really gross, but I bought it because my friends told me I needed to because I live in Aarhus. Uh, then I have some gin, and then the two rums, obviously. Like, um... You can grab that. Sure, we'll do a wine thing. I have an hour to kill. Sure, I'll do it. So this is what it this is what it is. Um it's really gross. Uh it doesn't taste good. Basically, um, do you know cough syrup? It tastes like that, but somehow worse. That's the best way I can describe on beta. I can't, you know, send smells over the internet. But uh it it's it kind of has like a black licorice kind of smell, but like a really salted black licorice and, and like like really salted. And then that, but somehow worse. Like they made it disgusting because I really like black licorice and I think black, li black licorice is absolutely delicious, but somehow this tastes like garbage, but it fucks you up really quickly. So if I need to get trashed, it's what I drink. <laughs> Not that I normally get trashed on a weekday, but, uh, you know, there's been a, a few regrettable moments caused by that alcohol. <laughs> New Year's Eve rings particularly close to heart. Um, yeah. Oh, perfect. 
That's time to uh, put the beer on top of the pork. So let's go. Oh, I uh, oh, we'll need to pull the whole thing out actually and pour it over top. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna need to do that. Cause uh, I don't have enough room in my oven. Lamau, it's fine. There we go. Cool. Put a little bit more beer on this. It looks really good though. Let's see if we can get a, um, let's see if we can move the camera. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I just gotta, let's see if we can get uh, the, you know, the money shot. There we go. Like, looking pretty good. I like to think that looks like delicious. It's not at all cooked. It's still very raw on the inside, but uh, it looks delicious. Anyways, give that a close. And now we just need to, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, come on computer, please. What do we need? Yeah, another 15 minutes. And then we just do the alcohol thing again. Boom, 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 boom. All right, now I gotta kill 15 more minutes. <laughs> Fuck. And then like in, uh, in after that, I could probably, uh, I got like an hour and a half. So I could go play some games. That actually might be the play. Um, that might be the play here. Uh, I don't know. What do people wanna do? You wanna, we wanna play some games? Uh, that's kind of up to y'all, so. If not, I can continue to chat for like 15 minutes, you know. I can, I can kill time. My, uh, my mom is, uh, has an infamous quote in the family, which is, uh, that, um, I could hold a conversation with a tree if I needed to. I can, you know, I can, I can have one-way conversations all, all six ways to Sunday. Uh, they just might get less and less coherent the longer they go on. I guess is the best way of putting it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment, or if it's a backhanded compliment. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I never asked uh, her, but I'm gonna take it as one because screw it. Uh, I, I need to because uh, talking is a, a large part of my personality. Uh, no, 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 no. I never, I never said you guys are trees. I'm just saying like it's, it's, it is like um, oh, what, do you, what is it called? It's like parasocial relationships or whatever, you know, like um. It's, it's not the same as like a regular conversation where it's like um, back and forth conversations with like actual voices where you can hear it. It's, it's very much like a, you guys are, well, first off, you guys are delayed, right? In like your conversation. Like I, I see what you guys say about 40 seconds after, like 30 to 40 seconds after what you guys actually say. So there is like that weird delay where I do need to like fill in like space. So like yeah, being a, Streaming live is not exactly like the easiest thing to do. So, uh, you know, that's kind of all I can say. Um, it's fun though, I really enjoy it. And uh, you know, the community's fun. And it's also really, I hope, hope to some extent or another you guys find it some level of entertaining. Um, I do would like to know that people, um, I'm planning on doing a, a Hearts of Iron, a Hearts of Iron, uh, playthrough with a bunch of y'all from if you guys own the game and are on the on the discord if you're more interested to join the discord if you own the game it's a good opportunity to uh, kick my ass in hearts of iron um as uh, as i like to put it but uh yeah
Uha. Sorry, I got blasted. I was opening the oven. I got blasted by a waft of warm air. Holy hell, that like, uh, have you, ever, have you ever had that thing? It's like actually dangerous. Like I could have burned my eyebrows there, which could use a bit of a burn. But, uh, <laughs> food I guess so dangerous. <laughs> hey, can you tell I've been living in Denmark for an extended period of time? <laughs> oh, boy. But it's fine. I'm a, I'm a Dane who says a boot, so I'm like a, I'm a Danish Canadian, you know, it, it, it works out. <laughs> no, but uh, no, Danish, you know, Danish is lovely. Uh, Denmark is lovely. The language is a bit, is a bit of another story, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a, I have been very outspoken on my, um, despising of the Danish language. Um, not because it's like, a particularly ugly language, even though it does sound a bit harsh. It's just that learning it is incredibly difficult because, like, Danish has like this uh, this this weird like problem, right? So, like, I, I again, I know I know three languages. I, I know I know French. And people, some people might already know this. I know French. I know English, and I know Danish. Not in that order. The actual order is English as my first language, then French, and then Danish. Um, and Danish and fr from the two languages I've had to learn that weren't my first language, obviously. Uh, so French and Danish have the opposite problems of each other. French is really easy to pronounce. Like if you actually nail the French alphabet, it's actually not that difficult of a language to pronounce. And it can actually be pretty easy to have a pronounceable conversation with a French person after a certain period of time. Um, Danish is not like that because Danish sounds like you have a potato consistently lodged in the back of your throat that you're constantly choking on while trying to talk. Um, it's a very common saying over here in Denmark, but uh, it's still a bitch. Um, the other problem is rules. Uh, French has a lot of rules, but the rules all kind of flow with each other and there's not a lot of, there are exceptions to the rules, but there aren't a lot of exceptions. Danish has like no rules. It's like, oh, why is this an en word? And why is this an et word? Like, ain't no, it. It just is. Like, you talk to your teacher, like, there's no, like, actual pattern. There's, like, a general rule of thumb, but even then, there's exceptions to that. So you're kind of just, you kind of just have to learn it and, you know, just struggle as you go. And it's like, it's like, it's just like, why? Why would you make a language that is so grammatically inconsistent? It makes no sense. Ah! That's just my opinion, though. Uh, the, the country's lovely and the people are great, but your language is rough to learn. To put it one way, to put it nicely. <laughs> but I love the country. I love living here. Food's good. People are nice. Uh, culture's great to an extent. But, uh, you know, the language is. Uh, it, Need some work. But again, who am I but just some guy on the internet who cooks food? So just put a potato in it. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a choking hazard though, isn't it? Just a bit. Just a just a small choking hazard. Uh but yeah. Yeah no. Yeah, just, uh, let's see what the pork's sitting at right now. What do we need to get it to? 
we're getting there. We're almost on rare pork or rare beef. So, you know. That's fine. That's fine. I got a little bit of beer left, so I guess I can drink. I, I guess at the end of the day, the beer is gonna get drank. <clears throat> but you know, it's a two ball classic, so you can't go wrong with it. It's a, you know, it's a very, a very traditional Danish drink. <laughs> My dad used to drink a lot of Pilsner back in Canada. I never got it until I actually started moving, until I lived here, because I didn't drink a lot of alcohol back home. Uh, well, I did, but again, it's, it's one of those like relativity things. I drank a lot of alcohol for a Canadian. I did not drink a lot of alcohol for a Dane. Um, I mean, the type of alcohol I drank was very different because I drank a lot with my family because uh, I was one of those not cool kids who never got invited to parties. Uh, you can cry for me. It's all good. <laughs> That's partially a lie. Partially the truth. Um, but yeah, uh, I like, I never really went for the hard alcohols. I drank a lot of gin and tonics um, and I really like gin and tonic, but that was kind of the closest thing to hard alcohol I got. It was actually really funny because um, before I would do homework um, and I would get home from like schoolwork, I would have like a beer or I would have like a gin and tonic and I would just sip on it while studying, which is like looking back, very Danish, I guess to put it one way. It's like it's a very Danish thing to do, um, and it's something that the Canadians thought I was like kind of like almost like getting to like alcoholic levels, but I I don't know I just. It was one of those things that was just, it was, I was, I liked the taste, so I drank it. And I still like the taste of gin and tonic. Um, it's a very good alcohol. life stuff again you know have my midterm tomorrow and I'm I had a lot of oh boy I had, I have my midterm tomorrow and I had quite a bit to drink this will be interesting I have to talk to the university tomorrow too. although this wouldn't be the first time I would have called the university hungover if I did get drunk uh, I guess I should explain that story uh, that'll be that'll lead us some time um, basically I was um, Ah, what was I? I was, uh, I, I just quit work. Like, I was working, so I worked in culinary, I did culinary school when I moved here. Because I, st I started the job in September, and I quit about a year later. Uh, yeah, ish, we'll say. And I called the university about enrolling in classes for, and they're like, yeah, okay, these are, these are the things you need to do, and like, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. And I, I went out, and I, I uh, or sorry. So, but I, I was quitting the job. And my last day of work, I got really, really drunk. Um, like, it was the first time I ever threw up from drinking drunk. I was, I was trashed. Um, I, I could kind of notice it. I was walking completely fucked. I did somehow make it to the bus and make it home completely fine. But uh, that's, that's still a miracle that I'm not sure how... Um, but, uh, so basically we quit, we started work at like 12, it was my last shift, so we got done at like 10-ish. Um, and after work we got a bottle of champagne, uh, it was kava, but, you know, whatever, sparkling wine. Um, we, and I had half a bottle of champagne in like 15 minutes, it was like bad. Um, so yeah, I have like half, yeah, half a bottle of champagne in like 15 minutes. Um, then we went over to the bar next door because it was still open because it was 
It was June, so COVID lockdown was over, but bars had to close at midnight. It was it was at that point. It was at that point in the law. Um, so we went over and uh, we went to the one bar. It was full, so we left. But we wanted to get a shot of Anbida because it was my last day. We wanted to get a two uh, an Ohu set, which if people don't know what an Ohu set. It's a shot of Anbida, and uh, and a say is tough. Um, which the the slogan for the say for for both of those for uh, an all who said is um you can get drunk it's a getting drunk on a budget basically because they're both really cheap um and so I got I had like two of those um because we just got them like to go I guess like we got a shot of on bit and a, like a thing of say and we just left um so I got two of those. So that's half a bottle of champagne, two beers, and two shots of alcohol. It's been like 45 minutes at this point. Um, I proceeded to have two more shots of licorice schnapps. Um, and then I also had uh, two more, uh, three more glasses of beer. So I think I had five beers, four or five beers, or something like that. Half a bottle of champagne and like four shots without eating since it was at that point it was like 11 10 o'clock um for context i hadn't eaten anything since four and i am not an i am not a big person i'm like uh i'm i guess i can give my weight away but i'm i'm 185 centimeters so i'm six foot one for those non uh metrically inclined and i'm 67 kilos I am not a big person, right? And yet I had had that much alcohol without any food in me. So it all went straight into the bloodstream, one could say. Actually, probably better if I use the... Uh... So, needless to say, I was like beyond trash. And yet it was really fun. I got home at like half past midnight, threw up in my bathroom alone because I live I live alone. Uh, and yeah, you know, just uh, it was a time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Just kidding. It was miserable. And then I woke up the next morning and remembered that I had to call the university about my applicate like my application and my my dealing and dealing with like enrollment. So completely hung over 10 minutes before I had to make the phone call. I made scrambled eggs because like it was the only thing I could make. Um, anyway, we just put the, uh, just did that. Cool. Good for another 15 minutes. Um, yeah. So yeah, completely hung over, did that, um, made, made like French toast or French toast, scrambled eggs in like 15 minutes. Called the university and was like, I'm not good with phone calls. I get really awkward. And so when I called them, they're like, oh, you know, how you know? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm pretty good. I'm really hungover, but because uh, it was my last day at work yesterday. And they're like, oh, really? And like, <laughs> and like I told my friends at the time, I, what I told them, like, you told the university you were hungover? You're crazy. I'm like, ah, I broke the ice, you know? It's fine. <laughs> but, uh, you know. It's fine. But yeah, that's the uh, drunk story of uh, when that happened. I should probably make more gravy uh, just because I'm gonna actually want it for dipping the pork, I think. But uh, it's fine, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think I'm gonna get that much out of the uh, stuff in the oven right now, though. That's the problem. Any wacky, uh, wacky drunk, uh, 
Drunk stories? No, I got tons. I don't have many of those. I only have like I haven't been drunk a lot in my life. I biked home drunk once, which is technically illegal. Uh, but I was like, I was soberer than half of the other people biking home. So I'll take that. Um, I also chugged like a liter of water before I left the restaurant. So I actually got more sober as I biked. It was really weird. Um, but that was from work. That was in like. October of 2020. God, that feels like forever ago because it was pre-second lockdown. It was right before I got fired uh, from my job, uh, which I got fired because of COVID. Because I kept getting un- I keep I keep getting unemployed because of COVID. It's you know extremely helpful, and I absolutely despise it. We're also almost done on the, we're actually like halfway done on the pork already, which is nice. Sorry, I really like this song. Probably this band's, one of this band's best songs. Uh, the band's called The Midnight. Uh, they're one of my favorite bands. Uh, not only because I really like the genre of music that they play, but um, also because they're uh, completely free to use on Twitch, which, you know, is always much approved by Twitch favorites. Um, forgot this pot boils really quickly, um, so I don't need to, like, blast it at, like, all of the temperature. Um... But yeah, just getting some parsley for the potatoes because I'm going to take like 20 minutes here and then by the end of the 20 minutes I'm hoping the pork will be done-ish. Um, we'll have to see. I'm not really sure why I have the thermometer in the pork. Uh, pork is one of those ones that you know you don't want to gamble with it because pork is um, not like steak where you can eat it raw. <laughs> pork has like all of the Pigs are disgusting animals, and therefore their meat has a lot of diseases. I can put it that way, I guess. Cool. Hopefully the vegetables will be good, though. I'm looking forward to them. Hey Josh, it's going pretty good. I'll uh, I'll get a uh, let's get a video. Uh, nice to see you join the party, considering this was your recipe. Bit late. The pork's been in the oven for the past like hour or so, but uh, you know. Uh, let's see. Let me get the uh, let me get the the money the, the the good shot of the pork right now. How it's doing? So we got it kind of vibing. Oh god, it fogged up the camera. Wait one. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. So that's how it's currently looking. Let me get some better lighting. There we go. Bam. <laughs> so I decided not to make both because there was two cuts of meat that the recipe said to use. I just wanted the roasted pork, not gonna lie. So. So yeah, it's going pretty good. I'm actually really excited with the results so far. We're just making the potatoes now because I'm assuming that the pork's going to be done within a like half hour or so. Uh, the roasted vegetables are sitting in the broth. I think I am going to make another batch of gravy. Uh, smaller this time. Uh, but I don't know if I have enough broth. So I might just use the smaller pan. Uh, and we'll see. We'll, we'll vibe with it. So I'll put it up to like a, a five and let it heat up. And then get a little bit of water. I think I should just water it down and then. Yeah, I'm gonna need more broth. That's fine. It's a little calm. 
opposite, so I can kind of just boom. Just add a little bit of water to it, and then I can let it reduce. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I can add the starch from the. Actually, what I can do is I can add the starch from the potato water to it, and that'll help with the flavor. Anyways, potato water is boiling now, so whew, don't burn your hands, but uh. Boom, 20 seconds. We're good. But I'm really looking forward to this because this looks delicious. And I think I'll have some time to, um, yeah. But Josh, how's your day been? Doing good? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing good. I'll actually lower this down because I'm not going to need it for 20. I'm not going to need it. In I'm not going to need it to make it 20 minutes early. Oh yeah, makes sense. I um, I actually really lucky with schoolwork because I have my midterms tomorrow, so they didn't give us any homework for tonight. And I got I found out I got Thursdays off this week. Oh shit! I accidentally locked the. Uh... There we go. Oh, um, I found out that yeah, we get um with the the government basically went out and said we need um. Due to COVID and the stress involved with, uh, I think it's due to COVID and the stress involved with doing schoolwork from home, they want us to do, uh, basically they wanted to extend the length of school, uh, but they wanted us to have less hours in the week. So we now have one, one more day a week off of lessons, basically. Um, so we get to, uh, we get like four hours less a week of school, we get an extra week of school added to the end, basically, is how it works. Which, personally, I'm not going to complain about. Uh, I don't, although, then again, I don't particularly care either way. Um, school is school. I'll go to it. Um, it's kind of all I can say on that regard. I don't want to taste the vegetables, see if they're actually done and if, you know, how they taste. Alright, got one of the beets. Mmm, oh my god, holy shit. That's good, that's really good. I uh, much approve of that recipe. Holy crap. The only problem is, is this is gonna make a mess in my oven. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to put the, the cleaning stuff I have, um, I'll have to put some soap and some water in the oven uh, when, I'm done, well, when it cools down. Well, not when it cools down, when it gets colder. So I don't have to scrub it as badly when I, uh, when I finish and clean up tonight. Uh, why I'm making such a complex recipe on a uh, on a Tuesday? That I don't know. Uh, probably actually was because the pork goes bad today, and so it was kind of the only opportunity I had. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all I can say on that regard. And we're getting close on the pork being done, which is awesome. And once it gets done, we're gonna take the potatoes and the vegetables. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna take all the vegetables out, and then we're gonna put it on broil for 15 minutes on like a really high temperature, just to crisp the top of the like the fat on the top, the skin and the fat on top of the bacon or on top of the pork, and then we serve, and it'll be done. Uh, my dad's made like almost this exact same recipe for Christmas before, so I'm kind of having like a Christmas dinner I've had before now, which is a bit pog. Um, and feels very fancy for a Tuesday, but it's also food for the rest of the week and I can use these in like sandwiches and such so And also for dinners in the future um, But yeah Yeah. It was a good 
good recommendation, Josh. I will take many more recommendations of dishes if you come across them. Again, anyone ever has a suggestion for food, you can post it in the Discord. I'll probably make it at some point. out of um, the next stream actually will probably be something a bit more mundane but um, on the other stuff but I actually do I am out of um, homemade um, cabbage so I'll need to make some uh, which means that the next stream will be making that because I have some cabbage sitting in the fridge now um, I need to use before it goes bad luckily cabbage stays good for like forever um, but yeah that's kind of all I can say on that regard Uh, and then yeah, the potatoes is gonna be pretty easy. It's just some parsley mixed in with some butter uh, and some pepper and some salt, which is already in the water. But uh, yeah, if somebody has a recipe that involves using a food processor, should also send it my way because I currently I just bought a food processor and um, I'm willing to use it, but I don't know what I want to use it for. So I'm kind of sitting in a bit of a weird boat on that regard. I don't know, I'm pretty willing to stream. I'm kind of like gen genuinely running out of things that I make on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I still need to make beef wellington for the stream one day, but that I need more money for, and I currently don't have, because I just splurged on this dinner tonight and also a bunch of new kitchen utensils. So maybe next month, next month's big stream, we'll be making beef wellington. Um, I also still need to do some of those extra life stretch goals. I have totally forgotten about all of them. So those will be some streams in the future. Um, maybe later this month. I need to order the Suez calming. I've said I, I've said I was going to order it since January. I had to sit down and actually order it because I did promise I would eat Suez calming um, on stream, which is a horrible idea. It's really gross, but I will also be doing it outside because I don't hate my apartment. And um, you can't open it in the house because your power burn will smell like dead fish for three weeks. Um, so, you know, gotta eat that outside. Yeah, I need to clean this uh, pretty quickly after I uh, get done with the stream here. Because otherwise it's going to stick, and then I'm never going to be able to clean this fucking uh, pan ever again. And that'd be bad, because this is a, this is a rental apartment. <laughs> and I don't exactly plan on going to buy a new uh, oven tray. It tastes so good, though. Holy hell. Mmm. Guess we start making the gravy. We should start heating up the gravy now. There we go. We good. I can't believe the stream's almost at two hours. Holy crap. I mean, it makes sense considering we lost about half an hour before we even put the pork in the oven. But I think the pork's actually gonna be done a little sooner because the temp is getting really close to done. We're like four or five degrees off right now on internal temperature, so. 
That might actually be the last time we um, we put the stuff on top of it. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We shall see. It says it should take one and a half to two hours. So we're on the right time plan as we speak. So looking forward to this. I'm excited to eat this. I'm very sad I cannot share this with the rest of y'all because this looks like really good. I'm gonna get the uh, bigger cutting board out, the wooden cutting board, uh, so that I can cut the pork on that. And I'm gonna get my big fuck off knife, uh, which isn't actually that big. It's just my it's my 21 centimeter knife. So you know, my really nice German knives, uh, which I'm using with my German pork. Uh, I'll sharpen it a little bit though. way too thin which is problematic but it's fine I am actually I just realized I bought a uh, white pepper the other day and this is a white kind of gravy sauce so it actually will blend in really well and will look much nicer if I use white pepper so can I get it to open yes, I can. Cool. I might need to add some cornstarch to that, uh, just to thicken it. Oh no, I can use the potato, uh, potato water that has starch in it. It has potato starch. Still, it'll work. Work as a thickener in a pinch. Does it at least taste good? It's like way too thin. Probably should taste fine. Yeah. Just needs to be uh, a bit better on the uh, concentration of it and the consistency. But the taste is definitely there, which is nice. Oh yeah, let's see what the pork's sitting at now. Oh, it's so close. It's like two, de it's like two degrees off right now. So close, boys and girls.
It's starting to get sweaty, holy shit. It's getting warm in my apartment. I mean, the oven's been on for two hours. I need some circulation. Gonna go open a window, even though it's not really far away from my, my uh, stuff right now. Boom. There we go. We're good. Um, four minutes. Holy shit, we're so close. How many potatoes being done? Which just means I need to gamble a bit more on the uh, pork. Which is almost there. Different love. Oh god, my voice just like died there. Holy shit. Sorry for that. Train tonight. There is a song singing in the rain. Don't get too close. My voice just like when oh. I used to be in choir, so I should be able I should be a much better singer than I actually am. It's kinda of sad. Yeah, very very beautiful. I don't know, I can get one of their songs I actually know the lyrics to. Let's go to the artist. Monster. No, not the instrumentals. Dream away. There you go. This is a good song. This way again, hold her hand. Oh, that the love is slow, then. The breath is deep as you lick it. There's a chance if you take it. And a heart that still breaks is still a heart. Sorry, I really like this song. This is like easily one of their best songs, in my opinion. It's not your kind of music, I understand. But uh, it is my kind of music, so very 80s. Very 80s. Two 80s. It's already being made, probably, right? Let's 
see if that works. There we go. I'm aware the timer's up. Shut up. Butter added to uh, the, what do you call it? Here. Wait, where's my pepper? My regular pepper, I don't need the white pepper for the, for this. There, and then we add our parsley. Is everyone hiding in the sub chat? I don't know. I wouldn't know. There we go. So that's that done. That's that done. And put the rest of the bouillon cube back together. Close it. And the pork is also done, by the way. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, it just passed the border of done with pork. So we can take the the vegetables out. Uh, which is right here. So that's good. Oh, that looks really good, actually. Holy shit. Okay. And then we blast this to 225 for 15 minutes. Yep, I'm aware. And start the timer. And then once that's that, that's done, which is very cool. And we also basically have like caramelized vegetables here, which will be very tasty. Uh, due to the alcohol, they're basically completely, it's basically just melting in my mouth, it's gonna like melt. Different, different. Just listen to this song. Here we go. Just some distraction. But I can start the cleanup now at least. Thicken for fuck's sake. Mmm. It tastes good. It just needs to be a little thicker. Yeah, okay. Those vegetables are like melt in your mouth good. Holy shit. Alright. Get a plate going. Um, all right. Come on. Just doing some cleaning up because we're nearing the end of the stream here. Holy cow, my apartment's getting warm. 
apartment is like meltingly hot. There we go. That gravy is thick enough now. We'll drop it to like a one. Turn this up to a one just to keep it warm. This will stay warm. Cool. There we go. I'm gonna open up my apartment window too. Cool, we're almost done here, chaps. Thanks for sticking through it. I'm so hungry, holy crap. Like, actually. Some of the potatoes too. Let's see how it goes. Mmm, yeah. Pretty good potatoes. Not like, you know, not like out of this world potatoes, but like her potatoes are pretty good. <laughs> then again, you can't really go wrong with butter, um, salt, and pepper, and parsley for potatoes, in my opinion. So. This is uh, not the right song. Yeah, nope. There we go. Sorry, weird 90s dial up music is calling, I guess. I don't know. See, we need even another five minutes here. Got like seven minutes left on the uh, timer, but I'm just a little worried about it being a little on the underside because it's pork, right? So. But yeah, 
I don't know what I'm gonna stream next, so I hope people can give me some good suggestions. I, I mean, it's not, no, sorry, I don't know what I'm streaming next. What the heck am I talking about? Literally just mentioned like 20 minutes ago, I'm gonna be streaming uh, homemade uh, pickled cabbage. Uh, I think I have a, no, I need to buy more sugar for that, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I can do that stream probably sometime this weekend. Um, and then otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm kind of running out of ideas. I can make pizza. That's the stream I can do in the future here. Um, which would be which would be really fun because I really like making pizza. It's a really good recipe. Um, homemade dough and everything, like the the whole the whole nine yards. It's a good recipe. It's really easy, and also extremely cheap for those people who are money conscious, I guess. So you know, just keep that in mind for uh, if you decide to do it yourself. I could definitely make pizza though. If people are if people are interested in that for a stream. But yeah, it's been a long day for me, so I'm kind of trailing off a little bit, and I can kind of feel it, but, uh, fun. We got, uh, four minutes left, and apparently this pork will be done, so that's good. Just get the utensils I need not to drop it on its way out. Let's we'll spit that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so no, I'm so anxious. Is gonna be so, if this is cooked perfectly, I'll be really happy. If this is still raw on the inside, it's gonna be really sad. We'll have to see, what are we at? What are we at time-wise? Come on, timer. Three minutes. Ah. I'm like out of stuff to talk. Fuck. Vegetables are still warm though, so that's good. Nothing's like gonna go so bad here. Yeah, let's hit that a little longer. Just realized it's been on the interlude, which is not what I need. Nah, there you go. Here's a good song. Nice. Come on. We're so close. One minute ish. Then we gotta let it cool down a little bit before I like dice it open, but at least we'll be able to bask in its glory. Good song too. On a completely related note, good song. This whole album is fantastic. I'm actually here. We go. I can tell you what something for the next three to five minutes. I'm hoping to go see this band live in uh, April. 
Uh, they were supposed to be originally in March, but obviously Corona slightly like canceled. So I think they've postponed it to April or May. No, it's May. It's May 20th, I think. Um, I'm supposed to go see this band live in Copenhagen, or Copenhagen, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm really, I'm actually really looking forward to that. It's going to be a really fun trip for me because I've never been to Copenhagen, other than the time I landed in the airport. And also, it's like my favorite band. So it's like a win-win-win. But uh, that's it for the timer. So we can take the pork out of the oven now. Holy shit. Okay. That's... Uh, to get this to get out. Come on. Come on. Boom. That looks really good. Holy shit. Okay. Let's try to get a uh, try to get a better, a better camera angle, but uh it probably looks a little dark, but it like holy shit. That looks really good. Let's see if we can turn it. Yeah, there we go. There you guys go. Look at that. That looks amazing. Let's see if we can get the, move the camera over a bit. So yeah, like, boom, boom. Like, that looks really good. Let it cool for like, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's turning out pretty good. I need to not burn my fingers here, so we'll, uh, Take the thermometer out. I'm just hoping it's cooked all the way through. <laughs> well, we'll take the little bit of gravy we got, and then, uh, not the best gravy ever made, but it's fine. Doesn't need to be, I guess. It's the best way to put that. Cool. That's that done. Potatoes. Then we get our uh, mixed, uh, like, caramel vegetables, which are a little on the oily side, but they should taste like mush and deliciousness. So I'm gonna get that sitting in water because it's caramelized and it's sugar. So if it solidifies, it's going to take hell and back to clean. Um, Yes, I am totally speaking from personal experience. I hate having to clean sugar items. But yeah, let's give this a cut. Let's go. Uh, let's go. I don't, have like a, I don't have like one of those really nice like pork cutting forks. But uh. Oh yeah. Oh yes, that looks good. Yeah, let's just cut a little bit of a thinner. That looks amazing. Get like a second piece here. Oh, okay. I am uh, satisfied with that as a result. Holy shit, that looks good. Like, still, still juicy. We still got the crackling on it. Uh, some of it's falling off, but it's fine. We'll give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Yeah. So let's give, let's give our final bit of a taste test. We've tasted everything else. Last thing we need to taste is the actual pork itself. So give it a bit of a cut. And there we go. Um. Oh my God. That is amazing. Holy shit. As one would say, that was worth the time and effort. Holy fuck, that's good.
yeah. Um. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. That's gonna be kind of it for me today. I'm gonna go and eat this and devour this like it's candy. Cause it tastes like candy. Um. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I hope everyone has a fantastic evening. And I hope to see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.